Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have seemingly an identical problem as the previous video. The only difference is that instead of applying a force of 10 newtons, we hang a weight equal to 10 newtons from the string, which is wrapped around the disc, which has a moment of inertia of 2 kilogram meters squared and a radius of 2 meters. We're trying to find the angle of acceleration and we're supposed to find why it's different, and this should be an O, different than the result we got in the previous video. Remember, on the previous video, we had an angle of acceleration of 10 radians per second squared. So what will we get here? So we have to work it as follows. We have to start with the equation F equals ma, which of course for linear motion, then we convert that to torque equals I alpha for rotational motion. Now we need to find the tension in the string and the tension in the string is always going to be equal to the weight hanging from the string plus or minus the force required to accelerate it. But since we expect acceleration to be downward, we're going to use a minus ma because it reduces the tension on the string by the quantity ma. If we were to pull up on the string, then of course the tension would be mg plus ma. So what does this become? Well, by definition, the torque is equal to all the, the torque is equal to all the torques in acceleration minus all the torques opposing acceleration. In this case, since the angular acceleration is going to be in this direction, there's only one torque, which is a net acceleration, which is going to be mg uh, minus ma or mgr, because what we know is that the torque is going to be the force, the tension, which is the force, times the perpendicular distance from the angle, from the point of rotation to the line of action of the force. So that would be mg minus ma times the radius, which is the perpendicular distance, and that equals the moment of inertia i times the angle of acceleration, which can be written as a over v. Remember that the linear acceleration, the tangent acceleration, is equal to the radius times the angle of acceleration. So the angle of acceleration can be written as a over, uh, whoa, a over r, not a over v. Good thing I did that to catch my error. All right, so what do we have here? What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the angle of acceleration. So why did I change this to a? Well, because I have other a's in there. I have an ma here and I have an a there. So first I'm going to solve for a, and then later on I'm going to solve for alpha because I know that alpha is going to be equal to a over r. So let's first find a, and then we find the angle of acceleration. Okay, so I'm going to need everything with an a on one side, everything else on the other side. So this becomes mgr minus mar is equal to i a over r. So this goes to the left, that goes to the right. So we have minus mar minus i a over r equals minus mgr. And then of course, I would like to change everything to a positive, multiply both sides by negative one. So I have mar plus i a over r equals mgr. Then I can factor out an a. So this becomes a times mr plus i over r, i over r, like this, equals mgr, and finally the acceleration equals mgr divided by mr plus i over r, like that. Now let's go ahead and plug in all the numbers and see what we get. So the acceleration is equal to the mass times g, well mg, that would be equal to 10, the radius, that's going to be equal to 2, all divided by mr, that would be, well, that would be mg divided by g, so that would be mg divided by g times r, and r would be 2, so I'll take care of that in just a moment, plus the moment of inertia, which is 2, divided by the radius, which is 2, so here we have mg, which, which is 10 divided by 9.8. So this would be equal to 20 divided by mg, which is 10, times 2, which is 20, divided by g, which is 9.8. 20 divided by 9.8. And then uh, plus 1. 
And so now when we grab a calculator, which is hiding over here, we can figure out what the linear acceleration is equal to. So we get 20 divided by 9.8 plus 1. Take that to the numerator and multiply it times 20. So that gives me 6.577. So that's equal to 6.577. That would be meters per second square. So now we want to find the angular acceleration. So the angular acceleration is equal to A over R. So in this case, A would be 6.577. That would be meters per second squared. And we divide that by R, which is 2 meters. And that would then be equal to... Oh, wait a minute. Let's start over again. Do I have my calculator in my hands? Okay, it does matter, but anyway. All right, ready? Okay. And that will be equal to, let's see here, uh, 6.577 divided by 2 equals, that would be 3.29 radians per second squared, which is only about one-third the angular acceleration that we found in the problem on the previous video by applying a force of 10 newtons. There's a huge difference between the two. But essentially, notice that the tension is only is mg minus ma, and since a is a, a significant number, about two-thirds acceleration due to gravity, that means that the angular acceleration would therefore be only about one-third. So that's about right. That's what we'd expect because the tension is reduced about one-third to 10 newtons, and therefore the angular acceleration should be about one-third of what we found in the previous video. And that is how it's done.